So when I start designing a logo, I if I if I haven't sketched something already, I just start playing with these shapes. So for a rectangle, you you have a rounded rectangle. Uh, I tend to keep the fills uh, and no outline. So I just keep a fill and no outline. Something like this can also have rounded rectangles, but you got to apply an effect. So if I say effect, stylize round corners and maybe 15, maybe 20, yep. So this one here has got a rounded corner, but you can see as I move the shape, the shape is still a sharp one, which means my vectors haven't been saved. So if I say object expand appearance, then you can see now when I move it, it's actually rounded. Now it is really rounded. So just start by shapes. Uh, and initially what I was thinking was I was just I was just thinking window tiles and different colors. So, the, so initially I was just trying to get bright colors really. And that, that was my original uh, line of thought there. Yeah, yeah, no, I was not, I was not going to violate any copyrights, but but I was thinking, well, what can be done with these kind of things? Because that wouldn't have been the use of my logo, but there are many things you can do with this. For example, if you like that whole colorful idea, instead of having uh, something like this, you could have. You could have petals there, you know. Oh, after if it doesn't, what you do is you really go back here and you take this corner tool and then you click on a point and you click and drag again. It sort of allows you to. Yeah, yeah. You can you you can you can edit points. You can add points. You can remove points. And then with this white arrow tool. With the white arrow tool, you can isolate a point and then sort of click it and have a play with it. So I was going to go somewhere with this, with the colors and I was going to say, uh, that was my original thought in terms of playing with the colors. Uh, so. Also what happens is, so in terms of user ex acceptance, you know that the color, bright colors have been accepted by users and it's, uh, they, they're not too shocked to see something like that. Uh, so that was something I was, I was, I was trying. Uh, but I never went there. <coughs> what happened was. I took this shape, press the alt key. Now if I press the shift key as well while dragging, it actually locks up on the same line. And then again I press the alt key. And I visually place it somewhere in between. And I was just playing around with it and that's when I saw this shape inside. And I thought, yep, that's what I want. Okay, so what do I do? If if I get one more shape, if I get one more shape, and I'm just going to change the color. If I get one more shape and overlap this region here. Now when I start dividing, when I select all of these, and I go to Pathfinder and I click on Divide. When I ungroup, I get my shape. 
And see, that's my shape. And what I really wanted was something like, uh, like this here, the hollow in between. So when I got the shape, and that too I did not initially plan the hollow, I thought this was going to be my logo. But then I made another copy of it. And made another, made another rounded rectangle rectangle pressing the shift key it gives me a square pressing the shift key I get a square now these two here I'm going to align them these two when you select more than one shape you get this option on top and that's uh, a vertical alignment that's that's cool and uh, I'm just going to send this to back arrange Send to back. And I'll probably move this down so that it looks like an archway, a door, as well as the symbolic greeting of a welcome. So, so there was no intention of this, but yeah, it, 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 it happened. I'm selecting these points, moving them just a little bit down. So the doorway and the, the welcome symbol, it was sort of okay for me and I thought it was quite symbolic there. But you know what, a client doesn't really care. A client at the end of the day just starts identifying a business with a certain shape and color and it might be symbolic to you, great. But don't expect a client to actually read all of that. So I'm going to just select both of these and um, once again go to my Pathfinder. When you hit Pathfinder, uh, divide you need to ungroup it and I'll knock this shape off and there are a few corner things at the bottom which I don't want I don't want this I actually do want that opening so I don't want this and I don't want this so that was uh, uh, the evolution of my logo that's one thing uh, I had in mind to show you I can throw this other shape here If I press the space bar while I'm in any tool, I can pan. So I'm just going to select all of this and just um, move it aside. The other thing that I wanted to show you was interlocking of text. Now, you don't have to use these things when you make your logo. Have a play, what whatever suits you, you know. So just see how this works. This interlocking of the text is pretty tricky. So just try and understand it. I used a serif font. So this is sans serif. It doesn't have those edges at the side. So I'll just go for Georgia. It's a serif font. Kept it the same height. Okay, and then press Alt, move it while pressing Shift, you get a copy of it. I get my other text. I just started with blue and orange, just some complementary colors. I'll keep a copy just in case I mess it up. When you start interlocking text, first of all, you have to tell Illustrator to treat it like a shape. Text by default is not a shape. So you got to select both your text and say type create outlines. And when you say create outlines, you can see what has happened here. It's, it, it now is a shape. So you got two of these. I'm just going to overlap them a bit and you'll see in a minute how the interlocking works. So I want part of the K to be in front of the D, part of the K to be behind the D. Okay, 
So I select both of these. Now this is the trickiest part. If you want, if you want to learn interlocking of text, which which really sort of throws uh, people away. They look at the logo and they think, oh yeah, that's that was pretty clever. So I'm selecting both of these. I click on divide and ungroup. So you can see now, I want this part to go behind. Actually, may, maybe let, let me put this part behind. Okay, I'm going to put this part behind. Now it is divided. Technically speaking, all I have to do is color it the same. You see that it's gone behind. But you can select these other bits as well and choose merge. So now this part has gone behind. Now these parts can also be merged. It probably didn't like it, it pro probably broke it here but that, that's good enough for me. And this bit here, I, I want it to go behind so I'm just selecting again once again I can just come here and select the blue. If you while clicking on it, if you move it even by a millimeter, it won't merge back properly. But you can see there, uh, these, these bits here, I'll try to merge them back, these three. Yep, that worked. But overall, it worked fine. Happy with that. Now, when I did this, I thought, oh, well, I need to start thinking about this fella here. Should I give it a neutral color? Or should I give it half and half? If you want to make it half and half, pretty easy just take one more shape and select these two divide ungroup so what that does is it actually gives me two parts here it gives me these two parts which I can have a different color and it also gives me these two parts which can be in a different color if you choose so okay but if not you can just you can just leave it leave it as a neutral color so there you go uh, what I did next was I just uh, typed some text so I just put DK Entertainment. Now one thing when you design logos is alignment. You can see I was a bit particular. Guys, 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 guys. I, if you're not interested, that's really okay with me. It's absolutely fine if you don't pay attention. Really, really. Uh, for me, even if I make a difference to even one student, if they take my knowledge, that's great. But yeah, please, while I'm on. And that's what, I mean, if. 10 people are talking it doesn't bother me if I if I notice even one person listening and I know Marcus was paying attention I know uh, Sham was paying attention that that's that's enough for me you know and that's what we are here for really I, I give the example of the same electricity running on campus it's the same electricity the same lecture going on the same teaching going on it's up to the bulb to reach up to its full potential and give out light there are bulbs which are dim there are bulbs which are bright so it's up to you the, the, the best thing about humans is you have an elastic brain. A bulb cannot increase its wattage, but a human can. You know, you start exercise, you start building muscle. You start working hard, your brain starts functioning at a higher level. It's really up to you. And once you understand that, oh, I have infinite potential within me, I can become as good as Paul or Mark in programming, I can become better than Dilip in graphics, and that's the truth. Uh, Last week I had a student who is still a student at TAFE. I had him come in to show stuff to some of my web students. He's gone so far ahead in programming and it's, it was really good and awesome. And I got him to show stuff that I haven't even reached yet. So don't sort of think that you can't do stuff. You can, you can go beyond uh, what is being shown here. So anyway, thanks for allowing me to speak now. Oh, is that car your mouse? Yes, the car is my mouse. The things I do to get my kids entertained and interested in computers. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, the Pathfinder menu is under window Pathfinder. <laughs> it, the, the lights used to light up before we dropped it 200 times. I knew it. <laughs> yes, they, you, you notice the sticky. Did. <laughs> no, that, that was me. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, I, I, I made this uh, thing here. And I just tell you how what, what I did later in uh, Photoshop. So, I'll finish this. So once this was over, uh, I saved it and make two or three versions, play with Pathfinder, play with text, see what, play with fonts, see what kind of a logo you can come up with. Uh, <laughs> So basically, once I saved the logo, what I did was I moved into Photoshop and I'll show you some very few, uh, easy tricks in Photoshop. So we are revisiting Photoshop today and Illustrator happily matches up with Photoshop, happily goes into After Effects. So I can just go and say file open. In the olden days, you had to place it, but now you can just say file open and it should be okay. So I think I have it somewhere here, logo 2. So it picks up the entire file. I'll just crop this bit here. Image, crop, and I'll just cut and paste whatever I have here so it comes in the center. In Photoshop, whenever you cut something and paste it, it comes in the center. So now I've just zoomed in. And I'll show you what I did to just polish it up. Um, let me just a little bit down. So that's at 100%. Uh, few things that I did were first I separated the layers. So this one, if you copy and paste with something selected, it gets pasted in exactly the same place. So if I copy and paste Apple C, Apple B then it gets pasted in exactly the same layer or in same position, sorry. So I come down to this layer, use my magic wand and occasionally you might see a seam if the merge wasn't okay, but this is all good. So I've taken the orange bits, selected the bottom layer, Apple C, Apple B and finally this entertainment bit. With the move tool, with the move tool, if you just push the arrows up and down and the layer is empty, so I'll just come here, up and down, it actually captures the borders of it. So now I've got them in separate layers, entertainment, my D, my K and my logo, okay? What I did next was... I went and gave these things a simple bevel. A very small bevel of 2 chisel soft or in fact 1 2 I will I will uh, I will do a drop shadow for sure. So with that and uh, drop shadow as Matthew suggested and a very subtle drop shadow, very subtle drop shadow. Now I've got my effects, I'm going to copy my effects, copy layer style. I can right click and just paste it on the other layers. So just a straight paste. Two more things, a background and some polish. 
for the background what I did was uh, and this is thanks to Alex and really these are things that Alex has taught me and, and I will sh I'll, I'll show you some of the things that I've learned from Alex here so he sits there and tells me hey sir I did these 20 steps and what did you do he says I did something like this sir. Uh, uh, I did he, he, and he doesn't do exactly things but these are the things that Alex would do fill then he says filter and he writes them down so he doesn't forget I wish I had written it down but this is something like what I did add noise okay then I went filter blur motion blur and then I scaled it he does a lot more than this he does 20 more filters than this uh, image adjust okay excessive filters is key to success good one Filters in excess lead you to success. That makes it a bit more rhyming. So, okay, then I colorized it and uh, left it at that just because I wanted a background. So, noise, blur, colorize, and it, you, you, can, you can rock up to Alex and I'm sure he'll show you a lot more stuff. But I tried it out, it worked well. And probably my drop shadow needs to be a bit more. So I'm just going to change my drop shadow. So I just change the shadow and I'm going to copy the copy the layer style and keep pasting it. And this one probably needs to be a bit. Okay, once I got this, then I used the burn and dodge tool to get some gloss on it. So the burn tool makes some areas darker. And you can see that. Um, if I just burn the top and bottom and I dodge the middle, it gives me a bit of shine. Do the same thing with the D. So I just dodge the middle a few times and it starts getting a bit brighter. Same thing with the K. So not using a gradient tool but just a simple dodge tool to brighten up things. A blur tool. It, I didn't want the edges blurred, so the blur might work. But yeah, I did that and that was the end of it. So designed in Illustrator, finished off in Photoshop, uh, that's your task 3.